East, this is the same fellow who told you this is going to end by Easter last time. This is the same fellow who told you that, don't worry, we're going to end this by the summer. We're about to go into a dark winter, a dark winter. Thousands of people sit without electricity. Imagine what that's like. You walk outside, you turn on your phone, there's no signal. You go back inside, you turn on the TV, no signal. You turn on the radio, no power. You turn on the faucet, no water. On June 22nd, 2001, the United States government began Operation Dark Winter. Operation Dark Winter was not a war game. Instead, it was something more unusual. Dark Winter was a germ game. In 2001, the US military, government, and media launched a mock battle against pathology. The premise was simple. A bioterror organization released a deadly virus into the country, and smallpox is spreading quickly. The US government must now react to contain the outbreak and stop further harm. How did we do? The results were disastrous. Within 48 hours, the government failed its objectives. The loss of human life was high, and when Operation Dark Winter ended three days later, a summary of recommendations were given to implement across different levels of government to better prepare in case of a future dark winter. There's no way we could ever experience a large blackout affecting the entire or a large portion of the United States of America. We know all too well. We're forecasting zero degrees, but you can tell by the accents. Main thing I'm trying to do is keep the Dagon pool from freezing. We're not just talking Minnesota. How historic is this winter weather event? We're seeing impacts as far north as International Falls all the way down to the southern point of Texas. Tyler Hosenstein is a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. And uh, typically we don't see uh, weather events that are happening across the country that far. Just look at this temperature map from this morning. It's like Arctic air took a nosedive straight down the center of the U.S. In our neck of the woods, that meant a weekend of three straight days with the high temp staying below zero. For the Twin Cities, uh, this is one of the longest stretches we've had of not getting above zero degrees, at least in February. Hasenstein says our cold snap is lasting longer than the 2019 polar vortex, but it's not as intense. So 2019, we had wind chills that were as cold as the 60s below zero. And uh, our coldest has generally been around 40s below zero uh, for this stretch. Just how historic is this weather event for your area? It's extremely historic. Scott Paget is the chief meteorologist at our CBS station in Dallas, Texas. We had a wind chill warning issued for the first time ever in North Texas history. And that's when the wind chill gets 18 degrees below zero. The dangerous cold has led to rolling blackouts across the state. Nearly 250,000 in Dallas County. To keep their power grid from overloading. What are the, some of the warnings you're telling them that you've probably never had to say before? Really trying to drive home the fact of your pipes are going to burst. This is pipe bursting cold and trying to let everyone know what to do. Keep the cabinets open. 12 degrees might sound balmy at this point to Minnesotans, but that was the high temperature in Dallas today, tied for the city's coldest high ever. The unfortunate news is that the threat of such a blackout is very real. Now there are a few things that we all know could disrupt life as we know it and make it very bad. Nuclear war, asteroid collision, aliens invading, a uh, horrific disease pandemic, a giant plague. And when we think about those things, we get scared because they'd be very bad. But then we get comforted because there's a really small percentage chance they happen, and they're almost definitely not going to. And then we figure, you know what, it's not worth even thinking about this stuff because there's no solution to it. Well, the threat of a blackout, the threat of a prolonged loss of electric power is similar in one way and different in two to those other threats. It's similar because it's that scale of magnitude as far as how much damage it would do to our society and to the rest of the world, to the human race. But it is a non-trivial probability of occurring. And there's a lot we can do, but aren't, to prevent it. 2020 could be the darkest winter in modern history. Darkest winter in modern history. That from Dr. Rick Bright today, testifying before the House Energy and Commerce Committee in Washington.
we're still facing a very dark winter. 